Okay, hello everyone, how's it going? Um, welcome to Computer Lab 3. Okay, so um, I just want to go over just quickly what's in the instruction guides for you guys and just explain some of the rationale um, behind why I've suggested things we do, do things a certain way. Um, so it looks on the face of it like it's quite a straightforward lab, which it, which it is. Um, we're going to focus research on more sort of um, genetic or molecular detail of the topic. So continuing, continuing to delve deeper into the topic in terms of molecular detail. So that, that's, the, that's part of the idea of what you're doing today. Um, so it's a continuation of, of the literature um, research. Um, I've got some strategy for, um, which you, you may already know, but a, a strategy to find um, papers based on the papers you already have. So you, that way you're, um, you're, you're increasing your knowledge base on the, the detail rather than finding new detail to write about, sort of trying to build up on the, the existing detail. And um, I'll give you two strategies to find this. One is sort of searching from the papers you have, and another one is just um, looking in at some databases. Um, I'll then quickly go over the guide for the, um, the figure, which I was hoping you guys might engage with next week. Okay, so, um, so, so currently you've got um, a few sort of um, documents um, from your previous week's um, literature searches. So you've got these um, you've got some Australian papers from the um, from the database initially, but you've gone to PubMed and you've got some papers by the Australian researchers, and these are um, research papers. Okay, and then what I was suggesting that you you, you do um, last week was from these papers you find some view papers. So, so w w when you're reading your Australian research papers, there might be a certain thing in that paper, whether it's a protein or a gene or a pathway or some molecular detail that the Australians are, are focusing on and that they think is important for progression of the disease. And that's what they're studying. So you then went on to find not just a random review article that's on broadly your topic, but a review paper that covers some of these details. It might cover one, two, or even if you're lucky, three sorts of, you know, of those papers. But you'll find some review papers that summarize the research papers. Okay? And these can, these, you, you search for these based on topic. So hopefully, if, if when you did your searching for these papers and you included some keywords from these papers, then this is highly aligned to that. If you just search randomly on a topic without taking into account the detail, then this paper might not relate very well to that paper. So depending on the quality of your review paper, you may want to repeat that search to find some good review papers, or say, yes, I'm happy with the, the research articles I've got, and I'm happy with the review articles I've got. So in, once you're happy with both of those, then I would suggest pursuing today's activities. Um, and with today's activities, um, rather than sort of going into PubMed and putting in some sort of term, question mark, and then getting you know, an enormous list of papers, rather than sort of trying to build up your literature by doing that approach, what I'm suggesting you're doing you take the good one of these that you particularly like. There's a paper here I particularly like, and I really want to focus on that. So you take this paper here, so this is my research paper here, and you search, as I, I sort of use this silly terminology in the notes, you search forwards and you search backwards from the paper. But what you're doing, you're using the, 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 the key thing that you're interested in, the paper that you're interested in, to seed your, your, your research. When you search forward, you'll find um, more recent articles. And when you search backwards, you find older articles. Okay? But hopefully, they're on topic. They're highly aligned to what you were um, looking for. And, and the, idea, the idea is that you're just using the fact that 
This paper contains a citation list, so you can find the paragraphs in this paper that interest you, and then you identify the reference, at the, refer the back of the paper there's a reference list, you identify the key references that they're talking about, and then you can, you can dig those out and have a look at them, and see whether they give you a bigger story, some more information on the story. Okay, so you're sort of finding some older papers that way. And then you look in the modern databases to who has cited the paper that you're interested in. Okay, um, find the paper you like, find the detail, you know, there's detail in there, and see who cited it in PubMed. Okay, and look up some of those papers. And the, di the idea is that this person who cited this paper may have been in interested in the same thing you were. And if they were, then they would have written something additional to what these people wrote. So therefore, your narrative is finding this information, finding this information and writing about those two bits of information in a paragraph, linking it together. You might also refer backwards and say, you know, you might start your paragraph by saying this and blah, 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 which led to this discovery and blah, 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 which has now been used for this, blah, blah, blah. So when you're writing your narrative, you, you have a timeline in there. And the timeline is, well, this was cited by this, was cited by this. And that's a, that's a narrative, and that, that's what you write about. Whereas if you're just collecting papers randomly that aren't related, you have no narrative. You're just saying random bit of information followed by random bit of information followed by random bit of information. And you think that's a good essay. And it's not really, a, you know, it, it, it can work. But this maybe will keep you focused. Rather than having a list of 16,000 papers and just randomly picking a few to write about, well, pick the papers you're, you're interested in, see who cited them, see who they're citing in relation to the information in there that you want to know about. Okay? So, 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 so um, but like I said, don't really get too engaged in that until you're confident you've got these, which hopefully you all have, and, that you, and also that you've got a, a review article that you like. And then when you're doing this process, do it once for a review paper, and then do it again for a research paper. So, so, so you do it, so one for research paper and once for, okay? And you might choose to do it more than once for each type, category of paper, it's up to you, but at least do it once for each type of paper, okay? And that way, you, you're going to build up your, um, your, your body of papers that have a narrative and that have got some information on what you're reading about. Okay? So that's, um, that's one thing I want you to do today. One of the other things I would like you to do is to take some, um, I don't know, your favourite gene one, some protein of interest or some pathway, whatever, so some information from these papers and um, go to um, a biological database, either a genetics-based database, a genome browser kind of database, or a protein database, and go in there with a key, the name of a protein, whether it's the acronym or something, and just see if there's an entry there that may or may not be useful for you. So the entries might cover um, mutations of that protein that are associated with diseases. It, it, there's, there's a whole wealth of information which you can get from um, genome browsers or um, you know, like genomics databases or protein databases. So I, I know you've all used um, um, PDB in functional proteins and genes, and I, I know a lot of you have used um, is it U UCSA or whatever, what's the, what's the acronym? University of California, Santa Cruz, whatever, that one. The, the, the genome browser, which you can, you can search in, you know, in um, for information. There's lots of databases. There must be, you know, 80, 100 databases out there. Um, so again, you can, um, y you may want to find some extra information that's different from what you get from research papers in a database. Um, okay. Um, and then the last thing I want you to have a think about is preparing a figure for um, next week. So, so you've got your bits of information here. You know, one, two, three. You've got, you've got some information from your papers, okay? And it might be sort of, um, this might be something to do with um, a 
protein, sort of, uh, you know, a receptor tyrosine kinase or something. Who knows? Something to you might have a bit of information from this paper about something. Okay? From this paper here, you might have something about, you know, genetics, you know, some sort of screen, you know, or some, some sort of, you know, association. I don't know, some information from a database. You might have some keg or some other database information. And you might just have some other information from a review article. So you started to collect information, and the idea is that this thing is associated with the disease through some process. These genes are associated with the disease by some sort of process. There's bits of information of these things, okay? And you might not see any obvious relationships between the different research areas from the different scientists, okay? but you can still have a go of pulling it together. And I think, basically, if you just kind of create a, um, a workspace, a cell, this is, this is because each of these things are operating in cells, causing the disease. So it might be that the receptor tyrosine kinase is, is located in the membrane somewhere, it's doing something. I don't know what it's doing yet, but I know it's doing something because the Australian authors say it is, whatever. You might have a pathway, um, of some description where this activates this, indicated by an arrow, or this inhibits that, indicated by a T-bar, you know, the sort of the way people draw things. You might have some molecular pathway from some of your papers. You might have some genetic information where you've got some sort of transcription of genes or some mutations in genes leading to you know, upregulation of a protein or downregulation of a protein. You've got, you've got things happening from these different papers. So draw in one cell an approximation of what's happening. And I think that's involved somehow. I think that's involved somehow. And I think that's involved somehow because that's what my reading tells me. I don't quite understand how this relates to that. And I don't quite understand how that relates to that. Okay? And it might be because this is not known or it might be quite well known, and maybe the review article will help you understand how things are related. Okay? So you can, you can think maybe a little bit about what, whether there are any relationships between these things, and there may or may not be there. And you don't expect everything to be related, because the whole point of research is trying to identify things that people don't understand. So that's what people are trying to understand. So I think from an undergraduate point of view, you want it to be, well, my disease is caused by A to B to C to D to E to F, and then it causes disease. And it's really simple. You're, it's not like that. It's, you know, cells are very complicated. So just think of, I've got something here, something here, something here from these papers that I've been reading, and here's my representation of what's going on. So this is the figure that I want you to talk about next week. Okay, now, in addition to making a figure, what I think is a really good idea is so you've drawn this and what I'm s trying to encourage you to do is not to um, take a figure from another publication. You've got to draw your own. All right? So in the minute review, if you cut and paste a figure from another source, I'm just going to go zero okay? because uh, that's not appropriate. You don't have copyright. You don't have permission and it doesn't demonstrate learning. So what's to like about cutting and pasting a figure from another source? Okay? It's harder to detect it when you cut and paste paragraphs from other sources and jumble the words around and you just read it and it's gobbledygook but at least it's a, a sentence, it's a paragraph and it indicates an attempt to try and understand something. But just cutting and pasting a figure doesn't work. Okay? So the other thing I've asked you to do for your mini review and for next week's activity is to say well where did that come from, that information here? So you say, here's the, um, maybe the front cover of a paper, and it's you know, the role of something in something. And you say, well, I got this information from this paper. Okay? Because that's where it came from. So just tell us where it came from. Okay? You've got some information here. Um, you know, so, so point number one came from paper number one. Point number two came from, say, it's quite popular that people use keg. For pathway. So you might say, you know, here's my cake pathway, and all these things on it, and I chose this bit here. This bit here is the bit I chose to represent here. 
Okay, just a little bit of that cake pathway helped me understand a little bit here because the Australians were talking about that, that, and that. And then the other thing was, you know, it might be, you know, I might have a, um, a nature review article. And there might have been a lovely diagram in the nature review article that had something doing this, doing, you know, a nice, really nice diagram in nature, which you based maybe this portion of. Okay? So just to do this, you have these anyway. So I'm not asking you to do more work by just dumping those sources on a slide and saying, here's my sources. But what you're trying to do is to, to make this, which is your synthesis of your, your ideas. Okay? So in your mini-review, um, I, I, the, 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 uh, you, you, you to include a figure that you synthesize, and also in your mini-review, you to include your sources as an appendix. So um, you can do that um, next week. You can say, well, this is my draft figure, and I can give you feedback if you want it. And for next, the next computer class, even if you don't attend next week's seminar workshop, I want you to include the figure as pre-work in your co computer class four. Okay? So there's a small assessment in the um, marking guide for the labs is, is the, this figure. But also, it's, it'll be marked in the mini-review. Because this really nails your understanding of this. And that's, that's, that's why it's a good process to go through. So, um, so that's what we're doing next week in the seminar workshop. Okay? So, um, is that kind of clear? Any, any... It's not particularly difficult. It's just um, show me your sources. And part of that is um, sometimes these can be too close to those. You know? And also, if you just were to include that in your mini-review, it would have lots of bits of information which you're not writing about. And then I'll be saying to you, well, why have you included those in a figure if you're not writing about them? Whereas in this figure here, all the things that you're drawing in here are things you're going to be writing about. So this will make writing easier because you can refer to your figure. So it, it actually makes writing the, the essay easier when you've got a figure to reference. And also don't forget to have a, a fig legend. Okay? Which just says, you know, um, you know, representation of you know molecular basis of such and such disease. Green circle represents the blah blah blah. Arrows represent interaction between the proteins. The you know something here, just a technical description of what the figure is. You know, so, it's, it's, so just so, so that um, you know, I can give you some feedback on that during the class, which might help you in preparing for what you're doing and thinking through what you're doing. And I'll try and make as many positive suggestions as I can for these, these figures. So that's it.